the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Dearly beloved, we come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth, and the height of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. You may be seated. Right. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers, in a worthy of praise. Glory to you.
<clears throat> Reading from the prophet Ezekiel. He said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I'm sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors transgressed me to the very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I'm sending you to them, so you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told that no mortal or person permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weakness. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering that excerpts and character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness, So I will boast 
all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For wherever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. play the antiphon through once first on the organ and then the choir will sing the antiphon and then you will join us in singing the antiphon. By the way, whenever there's music printed in the bulletin, that's for you to sing. So feel free to join us in singing. Um, and, uh, and then we will sing the antiphon again after verse 12 where it says A-N-T after verse 12. You'll also see that little abbreviation after verse 10 but we won't sing it there because we're continuing with verses 11 and 12. So we'll sing at the beginning and then at the very end. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all of this? What was this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? 
Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and not are his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we need a fresh anointing. We cannot borrow from yesterday. Come and meet us, Holy Spirit. Teach us of Jesus, his will, and his way. Amen. If you have known me for any significant amount of time, you will have found out that I am a massive fan of Star Trek. I have seen every incarnation, every movie, have met the actors, and have even been the bodyguard of some of them. Let's just say I'm a Trekkie through and through. My favorite version of the show happens to be The Next Generation, which premiered two months after I was born in 1987 and continued until 1994. There's one episode that stands out to me today after hearing our gospel, and that is the episode called Peak Performance, Season 2, Episode 21, just in case my nerddom should be questioned. (laughs) So in this episode, many things take place, but the thing that I think is particularly relevant for us today is the actions that takes place when the android character Data is beaten in a strategy game by a mere mortal. Believing that there had been an error in his computer programming, Data abandons his duty to the ship, locks himself in his quarters, and begins to battle with his self-confidence. Now enters into the story the captain of the Enterprise, Jean-Luc Picard, who orders the doubting officer to return to his duty and to the bridge of the ship. However, before he leaves, Captain Picard says these words. It is possible to make no mistake and still lose. That is not weakness. That is life. It is possible to make no mistake and still lose. That is not weakness. That is life. In our gospel for today, we see Jesus losing. For the lack of a better word, we see Jesus failing. Now, even as I say those words, I can already hear the rebuttals about Jesus' divine nature and the words omnipresence and omnipotence and uh, uh, being ready to defend the cause of Christ. But let me make it clear. I did not say Christ made a mistake. What I am saying is that even the infallible one knows what it means to fail. It is part of the human condition. It is not the result of a lack of morals, the punishment of God, or the effects of sin. No, failure is the price we pay for being terrestrial beings on this imperfect planet called Earth. In Mark's Gospel, we see Jesus doing everything the right way and still experiencing the realities of not succeeding. That should give us all a great sense of hope because if the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords has experienced the setbacks of this life, then we know when we experience them, 
It's not something we should feel guilty about, but rather it is an opportunity to practice the Jesus way more closely. When we take a closer look at the gospel, we can see that the events we heard today are actually the direct results of the choices of Jesus. Mark organizes his early sections of his gospel around Jesus' interactions with the various synagogues in the Galilean region of first century Israel. In Mark's telling, Jesus begins his public ministry by going to the city of Capernaum and teaching in the local synagogue. And for the following chapters, we follow Jesus as he goes from one house of worship to another. For all intents and purposes, Jesus was justified in thinking that his way of doing ministry and doing the work of God was a proven method for spreading his message. Most of us are like Jesus in this narrative. When it comes to our own ministries, vocations, and careers, we select a path, we develop a methodology, and we execute it as long as it proves successful. We rely on business models, formulations, and data, all to determine our next steps. And let me say, there is nothing wrong with this way of life. The question is, what do we do when that model doesn't work? How do we respond to the normal mechanisms that are no longer sufficient to produce our desired results? In this situation, Jesus finds himself when he goes to Nazareth. At first, the people of Nazareth were impressed by him. But about halfway through, they begin to question his legitimacy. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary? You see, there's no faster way to devalue someone than to bring up their past. Oh, that's all fine and good. He's a good preacher, but do you know who his mama is? <laughs> Wasn't she the one that got, mar- uh, got pregnant before she was married? I can't believe Joseph raised him as his own. Who does he think he is anyway? We humans seem to enjoy knocking people down and refuse to let them rise to the heights God has intended for them, and we often use their past as the tool to destroy them. The Nazarene's response was so forceful, objectionable, and cruel that it forced Jesus to leave. And the Bible says he was amazed at their unbelief. Total failure. The reality is sometimes the methods that have worked in the past will have no effect in some places. However, Jesus demonstrates for us how to recover from such losses. The Bible says, Then he went about among the villages. Jesus retreated to less hostile territory. After absolute rejection and ridicule, Jesus heads back to the villages that had been receptive to his message before. When you find yourself in a moment of failure that you cannot expect to move beyond it while remaining in the destructive situation, you have to change. It does you no good to remain where you are no longer effective. Therefore, in leaving his hometown, Jesus models for us the way to recover from major losses. After a setback of the magnitude that Jesus faced, it is important to find a place So it will let you see the situation and yourself more clearly. Because it is only when you locate yourself free from the criticisms that assail you that you are able to discern the next step forward. The gospel continues by saying, He went about among the villages teaching. Now that's an important word not to miss right there. Because Mark, in letting us know that Jesus continued to teach, lets us know that Jesus did not internalize the failure. Nor did he let the situation dissuade him from his purpose. We humans are fragile creatures, and the common response to criticism is self-doubt. We act like Star Trek's data and hide in our quarters, licking our wounds, not willing to learn the lesson life has sought to teach us. Yet Jesus shows how we are to rest in the assurance of our gifts and the abilities in spite of the contradictions and the voices that assail us. This is more than merely continuing on in the face of obstacles. I'm talking about recognition of your vocation and your commitment to stay on the course God has called you to. 
Jesus speaks out from Scripture today telling us not to let momentary loss determine future potential, but rather to let us set our sights on places where our gifts are most needed and accepted. The rest of the text shows Jesus doing some reorganizing. You see, there's no need to continue to repeat a pattern that no longer works. Jesus demonstrates this by implementing a new ministry model. Instead of relying solely on his own personality to spread the gospel, Jesus commissions the disciples to go out and spread the good news throughout the countryside. There is an organization put in place. They are to go out in pairs. There are restrictions. They are to take no money, no weapons, only a staff and a tunic. And there are safety measures. They are to knock the dust from their feet should they be rejected. What Jesus did was take the lessons he learned and used his own failure to create success for those for whom he was responsible. Jesus delegated tasks, he empowered his followers, and provided them with the tools they needed for success. The response to this shift in ministry is overwhelming. The disciples report nothing but success, and it all began in failure. Children of God, no one is greater than their master. If our Lord Jesus experienced failure, so will we. But thanks be unto God, we have been left an example of how to recover from such losses. The captain requires you to perform your duty. So I say to you once again, it is possible to commit no mistake and still lose. That is not weakness. That is life. Amen. God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. It's not written, but the peace of the Lord be always with you. It doesn't seem right to be at St. Margaret's and not say, share the peace, so that's my addition to the program. You may be seated. Well, welcome to St. Margaret's, and if you are new with us or visiting or haven't been in a while, please make sure to find a visitor card or you can get with one of our ushers and they can give you one so that we have ways to communicate with you um, and make you feel welcome. Also, a special welcome to those who are watching uh, via our live stream uh, or those who have uh, just tuned in uh, for a, a long time. Welcome to you as well. So there are a few announcements, and I'll try and be as brief as I can. Uh, firstly, the office will be closed tomorrow uh, due to the fact that we have the 4th of July today, so we're giving everybody a break tomorrow, so, so leave the staff alone. Um, the Grief Support Group will be meeting again uh, this Thursday night, July 8th at 6.30 p.m. in the Parish Hall. The Brotherhood of St. Andrew will meet Saturday, July 10th at 9 a.m. in the Parish Hall, and this month the Outreach Commission uh, will be there uh, to talk to the Brotherhood about their new program that they're starting uh, called Starfish Village. Also, uh, next Sunday on July 11th at 4 p.m., we are going to be doing an adult forum, which we haven't had 
in quite a while since we have, you know, COVID going on. Um, but we will be doing an adult forum at 4 p.m. on uh, queer history. We're sort of carrying over all of our uh, work that we had been doing through our safe zone training, and we had several people asking about historical questions. So we're bringing in uh, two historians on that on the subject. One of them happens to be me. That that's the worst of the two historians, and the other one is uh, Sarah Rodriguez, who is a current grad student at the University of West Georgia who does extensive research on the subject. So we'll be engaging in a dialogue together uh, and answering questions and things. Uh, so feel free to come to that. Also, we want to thank you for everyone who is continuing to give generously to St. Margaret's. You can continue to do so online at uh, stmargaretscom backslash uh, donations. No, what? St. Margaret's GA. There we go, stmargaretsga.com backslash donations. I was so close. Or you can continue to mail those in, or we also have the ability for you to uh, put them in the offertory here at the front. So let us go on to our birthdays for today. We have so, hmm? Oh, we have another one? Oh, yes. No, that's it. Excellent. Any other announcements? Yes. Yes. Grief uh, support group will meet Thursday night, uh, this Thursday night, July 8th at 6.30 p.m. in the parish hall. And then the other one will be next Sunday uh, at 4 p.m. All right. You're welcome. So we have a couple of birthday, uh, several birthdays um, we want to recognize. If I call your name, come on forward. If, and if you have a birthday and I don't call your name, come on forward. Um, Kel Sullivan, Elizabeth Basil, Avery Carpenter, Nicole Bush, Elizabeth Coggins, and Grace Russell. We want to acknowledge those birthdays. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We also have an anniversary. Wilton and Liz Key uh, are celebrating their anniversary. Um, where's she at? Well, come on, come on down and get your... <laughs> any other anniversaries we need to acknowledge all right let us pray grant O god in your compassion that this couple having taken each other in marriage and affirming again the covenant which they made may grow in forgiveness loyalty and love and come at last to the eternal joys which you have promised through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one God forever and ever. Amen.
and also with you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.
that if two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.